Hey everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we are going to go through the gravitational forces within the solar system, which is a topic in the IGCSE physics syllabus. Now, in this video, we will learn about the gravitational strength of a planet and its factors, as well as the gravitational strength of the Sun and its effects on planets in orbit. So this video is not very long because we're only going to go through what we need to know in order to answer the questions in the IGCSE physics examination. So first things first, you must understand how mass affects the gravitational field strength. So gravity is definitely affected by mass. The greater the mass of an object, the greater is gravitational field strength. So if we were to compare celestial bodies of different masses, for example, if we were to compare the Moon against Earth, as you should have learned by now, the Moon's gravitational field strength is about one-sixth of that of Earth's, and that's because its mass is significantly smaller than Earth. Similarly, if we were to compare planet Earth against Jupiter, Jupiter has a much greater mass. Therefore, Jupiter will have much greater gravitational field strength. So the relationship between mass and gravitational field strength is that the greater the mass, the greater the gravitational field strength. The evidence of how mass affects gravitational field strength can be seen in terms of comparing the moons of Earth against the number of moons of Jupiter. The mass of Jupiter is approximately 318 times the mass of Earth. Now Earth only has one moon and this moon is held in orbit around Earth due to the Earth's gravitational field strength. Because Jupiter has a much greater mass, 318 times more, it has a much higher gravitational field strength. And based on what we've observed so far, Jupiter officially has 95 moons and thousands of other small objects. There might be even more that we haven't actually seen and officially given them the designation yet. But based on what we officially know for now, you can already see that Jupiter has many more things in its orbit compared to Earth because Jupiter's gravitational field strength is so much greater and is able to keep more things in its orbit compared to Earth. Besides the mass, you also need to know how distance affects the gravitational field strength. And this should be quite obvious as well. The gravity of a celestial body due to its mass is pulled towards the center of mass of that object. So that's why the center of mass is also known as the center of gravity. Everything is pulled towards its center. So as you should have learned about field strength, the gravitational fields are all pulling towards the center of the Earth. If these lines were to represent the field strength, you can see that in the center, the lines are a lot closer to one another compared to those on the surface. So the further away from the center of the Earth, the more spread out the lines are. The density of lines represent the strength of that field. So the strongest field strength is in the center. And as we move away from the center of Earth, you can see that the lines are getting more spread out. So the further away the lines are, the weaker the gravitational field strength. So based on our understanding of circles, you should be able to see that the further away the distance from the center of the Earth, the weaker is gravitational field strength. So if a satellite was to be orbiting around the Earth at a distance away from the surface, the gravitational field strength acting on the satellite would be weaker compared to the gravitational field strength on the surface of the Earth. Now we will only compare the gravitational field strength from the surface of the Earth upwards. The gravitational field strength from the center of Earth to the surface is not covered in this syllabus. For your information, it doesn't actually follow that rule of further away will be weaker. It has a different rule, but we're not covering that in the syllabus. If you'd like to find out about that relationship, watch my video on that information, which is covered in the SBM physics syllabus. For now, let's focus on surface upwards. So as you can see, the further away the satellite is from the surface of the Earth, the more spread out the field lines are, therefore the weaker the gravitational field strength. 
Therefore, if the satellite is placed at an even higher orbit where its distance is even further away from the surface of the Earth, the field strength would be weaker. Therefore, the relationship is, the greater the distance from the surface of the planet, the lower the gravitational field strength. What else you need to know? You of course must know that the Sun is the center of the solar system. And the reason for this is because among all the celestial bodies in our solar system, the Sun has the greatest mass. So as we already know, the greater the mass, the greater the gravitational force. So the gravitational force of the Sun is what keeps the objects in orbit around the Sun. This does not apply only to the planets, but also to all other celestial objects like the asteroids as well as dwarf planets. That will be covered in another video of the solar system. The further the object is from the Sun, the lower the gravitational field strength of the Sun, which is similar to what we've already covered just now in terms of the relationship between the distance of the object from the planet with the gravitational field strength. Now because the gravitational field strength is weaker, this will cause the object to move more slowly. So that's why we'll find the orbital speed of the object is also slower. So overall, the further the object is away from the Sun, the lower the gravitational field strength of the Sun and the slower the orbital speed of the object. One more thing you must know is that orbital speed is not constant. So most objects that orbit will always travel in a counterclockwise direction, and the orbits are normally not circular. They're normally elliptical in shape, and in the case of planet Earth, the Sun is at one of the focal points of the ellipse. Because of the proximity of the planet to the Sun, the closer the distance, the greater the gravitational field strength, and that would cause the speed to be greater. So the closer the object is to the Sun, the greater its speed. So this means that when a planet is orbiting the Sun, it's not orbiting at a constant speed. It moves faster when it's closer to the Sun and slower when it's further away from the Sun. So what happens here is a planet would move, slowing down, and it really slows down as it's further away. And then as the gravitational force of the sun pulls a planet closer, it moves faster and faster and faster, and then it slingshots itself out back to the other end of the orbit. So this can be explained through the principle of conservation of energy. The greater the speed, the greater the kinetic energy, because as you should know by now, kinetic energy is calculated as half mv squared, where m is the mass of the moving object and v is the speed of the object. So greater speed, greater kinetic energy. So when the planet slows down, its kinetic energy is decreasing. So this kinetic energy is converted to potential energy before being converted back to kinetic energy as it speeds up. And that is it for this video. If you found this video to be helpful and educational, please click like and subscribe for more physics lessons by your physics teacher, Ms. Ho. Help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practical videos. Donations are welcomed at my coffee page. That's ko-fi.com slash physics rocks. For access to notes, quizzes, and syllabus updates, please visit my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!